Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm bringing you yet another book haul with yet another load of classics. Today I have a book haul of predominantly Penguin English Library books and then there are a few other classic collections towards the end and then I do have four like non classicy books to show you at the end but it is as you can kind of see from the stack like just penguin english library i have been uh, treating yourself a bit too much so most of these however i did get um from a used book website called world of books which is absolutely amazing i love them i think they're great um but what i basically did was just like put into the search bar penguin english library paperback and then went down the list and like anything that was basically three pound fifty or cheaper i decided to buy because I've now just fully committed that I want this entire collection and like I want to own them, I want to have read them all, we're doing this. Uh, I don't actually know how loud the road is here by the way as well so apologies if this is just traffic central but like whatever. I'm going to drink a G&T &T and show you all my new books. Some of these you may have seen before because some of them are featuring in TBR videos and various things like that. And also I'm just generally very bad at keeping track of what books I've already shown you and what I haven't shown you in a haul. So I might even be missing some that have already been put on my shelves that I have ordered like since the last haul. Uh, but the first one I have is War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. There are plenty of H.G. Wells in this. Um, this is the iconic alien story uh, where aliens come and invade and then they kind of get taken down by like our germ system because they don't have any immunity. And this was made into a radio play ages ago and it was like so realistic that people thought that it was genuinely real, which is very, very cool. Um, I'm hopefully going to be getting to this in the reading rush. Or maybe, maybe going to hold off on this one because it might work for Monsterathon in September. Not too sure yet. Then we have another H.G. Wells called The Island of Dr. Mar Mario. I always call this Murano because I keep saying the uh, Island of Dr. Murano is in like Murano glass from Venice, but it's not, it's Moria or something like that. Um, but basically this is a survivor gets washed up on an island, is shipwrecked and finds that on this island uh, there is a strange uh, scientist who's kind of created these weird monsters and creatures. It's a very thin and this one I am definitely going to try and get to in the reading rush because it is the one for five, le five uh, words in the title. Branching slightly away from the sci-fi classics, I do have Anne Bronte's The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. I'll hopefully be reading this in September, buddy reading it with the lovely Carly over at Bell's Books. Fingers crossed we haven't like finalised the dates for that, but I'm pretty sure we're going to go for it. I've got a bunch of Bronte in here. I already had um, Emily Bronte on my shelf, but I bought uh, her other two, like her two sisters. So I have one from each and at some point I am going to get around to doing a Bronte. And there's the other one. We have Charlotte Bronte's classic Jane Eyre. So we've got kind of their iconic ones. Um, I absolutely adore the cover for Villette though for in this edition so I will have to pick it up at some point but I figured I might as well go for like the iconic one first. I do also have this on audiobook so I might just go for it in that form as well but I really love the cover. I think they, they just do a stunning job this series. There's very few of these covers that I don't actually like. Now when deciding to collect a specific edition of books occasionally you do run into duplicates and for me that is with Emma Jane Austen. I did buy um, the Knickerbocker Classics from America, their, their edition of Emma, but actually I've decided I would rather own the Penguin Library ones because I've already got two of them that I've read, which is Northanger Abbey and Persuasion, and I really just want to stick with this format because I'm not going to end up with any more of the Knickerbockers because you can't get them easily in the UK, whereas these are freaking everywhere, which means it's really easy to feed my new addiction and make my shelves look pretty. So uh, really psyched to get to this one at some point soon, although it's much thicker than the other Austins I've done, so a bit intimidating. So this one is The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton. I know nothing about this beyond the fact that um, Olive from a book Olive rereads this book constantly, has just done a new video focusing entirely on the female lead, and I just, I'm keen, I'm keen. This is definitely getting into the realm of like, didn't actively necessarily pick these particular ones, but they really cheap on world of books, and I figure, if I own them, then I'm more likely to read them, which means it bodes well for my like trying to read more classics vibe. And sometimes it's just fun to like pick up random books that you don't know much about. Um, I do have a brand new like classic shelf. I got um, like a really old, gorgeous vintage bookshelf with a glass front. I inherited it from my grand my grandparents, and um, I've now decided it's going to be the place where I hold all my classics and my nonfiction. And these just look stunning together on the shelves. So, but they only make it there once I've actually read them because I have my to be read shelves, and then they migrate to the fancy classic shelves once they've been read. So this is a really good incentive to read them so that I can make that look gorgeous. It's also right in the like main foyer of the house so that, that when you first walk in you see like our gorgeous classics and non-fiction on 
like a really fancy shelf and we look like fancy people who read like fancy books because you know that's what totally matters with this going down the similar vein we have Humphrey Clinker by Tobias Smollett I know nothing about this one had never even heard of it before but the last Penguin English classic I picked up which I knew nothing about was the Richard Marsh the Beetle which was freaking amazing so I'm quite psyched about this one this is something to do with like like debauchery and and generally raucousness and being in like a terrible situation um, and it's supposed to be quite grotesque and have a lot of wordplay and it generally looks quite fun and I don't know whether you can see but they're like tiny little bottles on the front and I think that they are adorable. Going into like a very iconic well-known classic now we have Charles Dickens A Tale of Two Cities. There are a bunch of Charles Dickens available in this format like there's there's tons I think nearly his entire collection of work body of work has now been put into this format. Um, this was one that really appealed because it's neither like very slim nor like chunky boy um, so I'm kind of keen to go for it and apparently Dickens considers it his best work that he ever wrote so you know you, you gotta listen to the master in these ones um, so yeah we have that one it's knitting on the front but it does look like tiny little cities like tiny little buildings we have a really precarious stack forming it might like fall and kill one of the rabbits um, the danger of getting a world of books order is you do run the risk of getting like weird editions of things so this is actually as you can see here like a shiny edition of the uh, penguin english library paperback when normally they're a very like matte finish and some of them i've got here have been like more of a kind of i almost say cream finish then but that's that's like a lipstick finish but you know like there's the kind of satin there's matte and then there's this so you kind of do get a bit of a weird mix um because this is an old library book uh from the lancashire county library on Bowron Street, apparently. Good to know. It was last checked out only in 2017. Very recent. Um, but yeah, anyway, Treasure Island, fantastic cover, Robert Louis Stevenson. I could have sworn I'd actually read this, but then I skimmed it at the very beginning and was like, I don't remember any of these sentences. So maybe I haven't. So it's gonna stay on my to be read shelf because also I definitely haven't read The Ebb Tide, which is the other one in this, and they are basically like a 50-50 split. So I am keen to get to this at some point. And I, I absolutely adore the colours on this cover. I think they're great. So I've got already an uh, Arthur Conan Doyle Sherlock Holmes Penguin English Library on my shelves, but I have now added to it with a study in Scarlet. Um, this is much, much thinner, and my hope is to try and get to this t one in August for one of the Newt's prompts. Then we have uh, H.G. Wells again. Uh, we have The Invisible Man, which I haven't read, but I might be doing for the Reading Rush because it does indeed have purple on the cover, and it means I can keep War of the Worlds for uh, Monsterathon, which is really good. The only one I've read is The Time Machine, and I thought I ordered The Time Machine in this order, but it hasn't turned up yet. But occasionally, World of Books can be a little bit like shaky on that. They don't send everything all in one go. These actually arrived in like three separate packages. Packages. not that I ordered all of them through World of Books I ordered I think like eight or nine so I do need to go back and check my order and if it hasn't arrived soon make sure I get it and if it if I hadn't ordered it I do want to pick it up because I have actually read that one um, but yeah so this is like I think HG Wells only has four books in which case once I buy the time machine I have all of them which is pretty cool and then the final Penguin English Library classic, don't worry, I have plenty more classics to come, but the final one in this particular edition is the one whose cover I like the absolute least, and that is uh, the murderers of Rue Morgue and the murders even of Rue Morgue and other tales by Edgar Allan Poe. I'm hoping to get to this one sometime in October for like Spookathon, but again I might now read it in Monsterathon because that's got a spooky slant to it, but I just feel like for something that is supposed to be quite spooky, you know Edgar Allan Poe is known for writing more of the kind of horror, um, spooky stuff, why has it got such a bright cover? Like this blue is and um, pink is such a like jarring contrast it just it's the antithesis of what i would expect from an edgar Allan poe like i kind of wanted this to be like in gray with black and it to be far more dramatic but it's just gone for like the brightest thing you've ever seen uh, so not overly impressed with that one so those are my penguin english libraries but like I said, I do have a few more classics. You've seen this one already because it was mentioned in my July TBR, but I do have The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo, and this is the Everyman's Library Classics, and I am kind of semi-collecting these as well. Now, I do not intend to get all of them, like I do with the Penguin English Libraries eventually, because basically there's like well over 400 in this line, and there are a lot of duplicates with the English Library Collection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cherry pick a lot more with this one, and these are really good for books that you can't get in the English Library format, or for like more modern classics as well which is really exciting. So I have uh, their edition of Jules Verne, the three stories, which is basically Jules Verne's entire catalogue. 
on my shelves already and now I've got this one and then because of that I was in a bookshop recently and I decided to treat myself to Joseph Heller's Catch 22 which I have already read and it's one of my all-time favorite books I think it's phenomenal I have one of the like original covers which is basically like a weird tan and orange combination and whilst I enjoy it for like its vintage feel it's really not pretty like as far as the combination of colors go it's absolutely hideous whereas these are stunning and just like lend so much like gravitas to a book do you know what I mean like you know the hype around kind of classics and whether you should be reading them or whatever is entirely by the by like books that are like this are just pretty and I want them on my shelves and I really do love this book so I am planning on trying to collect a few more of them my rate is going to be way slower because basically they're nowhere near as common which means that finding like new and used like used ones is harder and because they are hardbacks they are already more expensive so actually my rate is going to be significantly slower than the penguin english library so i'm going to focus on collecting the ones that i have read already which will be basically uh alexander dumas for the foreseeable future and then might start branching out and maybe pick up like a Huxley or something as well or some of the Raymond Chandlers but I am intending on trying to collect a few more of them. Adding to a collection I already have I picked up Crime and Punishment by uh, Dostoyevsky. This is from the Penguin Russian Classics uh, collection of which there were six books. I've got both the Tolstoys, uh, War and Peace and Anna Karenina. No I've not read either of them yet. I know I said I was going to and I've attempted both of them, but I find them really, really hard going. Whereas I have heard from doing a bit of research now that Crime and Punishment is a surprisingly easy going read if you don't have a background in Russian literature. Because I find all the different names that they use really confusing and I just can't keep track of what like everybody is called. So apparently this one is a little bit more like beginner friendly and is a fraction shorter. Though when you're saying that a book this size is a fraction shorter than the other alternatives, that's, that's just depressing. It just means that I'm more likely to get around to this one. I do eventually want to have all six because they are gorgeous on the shelves. Like the colour combinations are just unbelievably cool in these. Um, so I figured we're now halfway there. But I might make it a promise to myself that I have to read at least one of them before I'm allowed to buy any more in this series. Because I can't own all six and not read, eat, like, read any of them. And then the final one of like kind of classic collection kind of vibe is uh, The Frenchman's Creek by Daphne du Maurier. These are the Virago Designer Modern Classics editions. There are a whole bunch of them. I read Rebecca back in January on audiobook form and I was tempted to buy that because I have at least read that book and it isn't adding a yet another unread book to my shelves. But I really want to try another du Maurier and this one involves a pirate so I'm kind of on board because I love pirates. Pirates are fun and it's a little bit shorter and they are absolutely beautiful so I am again like low-key kind of collecting a few of these I'm not going to make it a priority, I'm not going to try and collect all of them, but wherever possible if I can buy a book that I'm already kind of like from either an author I'm already interested in or the book itself, if I can get that in one of these versions rather than like in a generic paperback, I'm going to go for it because again they look beautiful all together as a collection and I really like pretty books and actually I do find that when you have a pretty edition of a book that you kind of like you want to read but isn't like an exciting new release or maybe you've heard a lot about it or you're not too sure it's going to be like a difficult read if it's pretty i'm just so much more likely to read it and that might make me shallow but i'm okay with that and now we have the portion of my haul of like non-classics books and i think it even has a classic in that because apparently that's just all i'm buying at the moment and i'm kind of okay with it you've seen this on my uh channel already because this was on my like mid-year book freakout tag is one that i'm keen to read later off the year and that's the doll factory by elizabeth mcneil this is going to be my buddy read pick for amy in august next month i know this because it's on my notes come on emma wake up um this is gorgeous and it is basically a historical fiction focused on the pre-raphaelite artists and a young woman who wants to kind of join their ranks um so it looks really interesting then i have my only non-fiction of the collection which is color um a travels through the paint box by Victoria Finlay. This book I've been umming and ahhing about buying for literally like a year. I must have picked it up in a bookshop, in like different bookshops, maybe eight or nine times, and then kind of put it back and favoured something else. And then Andy and I were in um, Topping & Co in Ely, one of my also favourite bookstores ever, it's amazing. And this was on the shelf, and I was kind of, I looked at it again for like the 10th time, and was just like, just buy it already like you so clearly want it you gravitate towards it every single time just buy it it does what it says on the tin or on the paint box 
more accurately. Um, it is a discussion of like the history of different colours and how pigments are formed and like different um, symbolism through colours and various things like that. I'm saving it for non-fiction November basically. Um, it is quite a bit of a chunky beast but I'm really excited about it and that cover is stunning. And then I was in town the other day and decided to go on a bit of a treat yourself which is where a few of the shiny classics came from but I was in FOP and they had two for a fiver. So I picked up XX by Angela Chadwick, which two for a fiver on a brand new hardback. <laughs> How are you doing this spot? Like seriously, what truck did this fall off of? Um, this is a feminist fiction story. It's about reproductive rights and it specifically is kind of thought experimenting the idea of what if two women could um, basically have a child without needing a man. And the idea is that there is like a clinical trial has just gone ahead saying that they will allow human subjects to basically test run this and two women can then have a um, give birth to a girl and it then comes down to like the media storm that surrounds that. Uh, Harriet Rosie read this recently and said it was absolutely amazing or she was like in the process of reading it um, and basically that it, it echoes the kind of wording that the media uses so strongly and she just made it sound so fascinating that I wanted to grab it. It's far too heavy going for the mood I'm in right now but it can join my shelves for like some of the hard hitting thought experimenty speculative fiction I have and at some point I will uh, feel like I have the mental energy to go give it a go. And then the final book I have is technically a classic in its own right but it doesn't fit nicely with any of my new collections so therefore we're not going to count it in any of those and that's John Wyndham's The Chrysalids. So this I picked up because it was the two for fiver. They had a bunch of different John Wyndham's. I have the Day of the Triffids on my shelves but like one of the orange penguin covers which are just hideous like what is that um so i picked this one up they he, they do have like his entire collection in this design with these like funky covers which again i may go for i don't know if john Wyndham is like in any of these other editions but for two for a fiver i figured i'd pick it up um i am in like a very much a classic sci-fi kick at the moment so at some point after i've tackled jules Verne and hg wells i think john Wyndham will be next and that is it from me, a fairly huge um, haul, especially classics. You might say I have a slight problem when it comes to the Penguin English libraries, but I'm, my collection's doing really well. Now I just have to read some of them so that they actually end up off my TBR shelf and in the bookshelf that I actually want them to be in. So yes, where would you recommend I start? What do you think is the best kind of classics covers? Do you think I have a problem when it comes to the Penguin English libraries? All of these can be answered in the comments down below. Subscribe if you like my stuff watch more videos if you fancy and generally have a wonderful reading week. I'll chat to you soon. Bye!